Happy day now. Hey, <laughs> Thursday, May 24th, and this is six fing six finger six period or six fingers like the six fingered man. Uh, it's almost the exact same thing. Um, one of the things that I do is I try to change what I say a little bit for each class. Um, because I have a lot I could easily say. I have two to three days worth of stuff I could go through and do, but I try to pick out the best 30 minutes of information that I can pass along to you. Um, Braverson, I'm going to have you shut my door. Kids out there are a little distracting. I have enough issues today. Uh, and that's where this comes in, my little piece of paper. It sort of helps me stay on topic as best I can. And I've realized that uh, different class periods form different personalities, depending on who the kids are that are in there. Uh, my first period has a different personality than my third period. My second period has a different personality than my sixth period. And so it's one of the joys of teaching is that a class will develop its own personality depending on what kids are in there. And they can have similar personalities, but it's going to be their own personality. Uh, when you guys kept asking me, like, who's your favorite between second and sixth, and quite honestly, I can't think. You guys have different personalities. Yeah, you're both advanced classes, but how you guys behave and how you guys react is completely different than how second period behave and how second period reacts. I have different conversations I can do with you than I can with them, and then vice versa. It's, for me, one of the things that I love about teaching is the fact of how classes work together, sort of that whole sociology. And the fact that a class would not be the same without certain people in it, because you guys give it that personality. Whether it is a vocal person, whether it's a distracting person, or whether it's even the quiet person. Because as a teacher, you need all of that. Ooh, random pieces of paper. Uh, Duplicis, uh, just put it on my calendar over there. Thank you. I think I got all the S's in your name when I pronounced it. Yeah. I nailed it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Globe trotter. It's okay to feel dirty when she's in there. Um, and so, uh, uh, Duplicis, you distracted me talking about personality, different classes coming in. Um, and so, one of the joys I have is the idea of the different kids in here. And even those of you who are quiet and you feel you give no personality to a class, you do. Because sometimes it's your reactions when I teach. It's your smiles, your shrugs. It's the little things that happen. Because I can't have a class of 30 kids who all want to talk. It wouldn't work. I can't have a class of 30 kids who are all mute and stare at blink at me. I have to have a mix of both of them. And for many of you, even if you are not the vocal kid that talks, you are a contributing part of our personality in the class. Now given, part of my job, at least what I feel my job is, is to help some of you develop as a person. And many of you need to develop in different ways. And I sort of, <laughs> I don't teach like how most people teach. Uh, I'm a little different with how I approach things. I know, shocker, I waited at the very end to reveal that. Uh, but I try to look for what I see as a weakness of yours. And I try to help you overcome that weakness, whatever it might be. Because my goal is to make you a stronger person. And for some of you, your weakness is self-control or behavior. For others of you, your weakness is the fact that you can't stop yourself from talking. For others of you, your weakness is the fact that you're scared of others' opinions of you, or you're shy, or the fact that you don't speak up as much as you want. So my goal is to try and help each one of you overcome whatever I see your weakness as being. Sometimes I achieve that, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I get you closer to it, and we can't fix everything in a year, but that's my goal, is to help get you farther along, and to those of you who are in a shell, to pull you out of your shell. Those of you who need discipline, I try to step up and help with discipline. It's why I do almost everything I do throughout the entire school year. It's aimed at making you a better person. Because I have realized throughout my years of teaching that that is much more critical 
than anything I could ever teach you English-wise. What I teach you English-wise is important, but a lot of what I teach you can be Googled, uh, which is why I've changed my class and why I let you use iPads, because I figure it makes me a stronger teacher to not give you questions that you can just Google. Because if you can Google a question, I shouldn't be asking it of you. Because that's at some point in the future, you're going to have a computer implanted in your brain. I'm pretty sure the cyborgs are going to take over. And you're going to just like blink an eye and Google things. So I have to teach you other ways. And so I'm going to help make you a stronger person. And I think that is a much more important job as a teacher. Now, you might have picked up on the fact that I'm on the minority of teachers who seem to believe that, uh, but I also don't really care what other people think of me. Uh, and so I boldly do what I feel is right. Sometimes it gets me in trouble, um, but I believe if my heart is in the right place, then I'm okay with whatever comes from that. And that mentality infuses everything I do. Everything I did this year is to make you a better, stronger person. Even if it didn't seem like what I was doing was to make you a better, stronger person. It was. All the way down to lying to creatively manipulating the educational factor of children. Um, we'll just call it lying. Um, was to make you a better person in one way or another. Um, for one, I know school's boring. I'm here all day. I went through 12 years of school. I know what it's like to sit there as a kid and be bored in a classroom. I didn't like that myself. So when I became a teacher, my goal was to not have a room where that happened. So I try to make my room an interesting place. Part of making my room an interesting place is having you buy into the mythology of my room, of buying into the character of who I am. It's why I tell you that I hate children. When you aren't dumb, it doesn't matter what I say, you know my actions, and you know that my actions show that I don't hate kids. I can tell you that I have a heart the size of an acorn, but you watch my actions, and you know my heart is easily the size of a walnut. But I try to downplay it as much as I can. So part of that is, with the lying to you, um, it helps create a more entertaining class. The idea of me being this horrible, evil teacher that you guys can rage against, it makes it more fun than me being a steadfast teacher up here that tried to control things. And the fact that I allow you guys to express more of your personality. All right. Remind me in a moment to come back to lies. I'm going to go on a tangent. I'm going to get distracted because I'm emotionally exhausted. So remind me back to come back to lies. Yeah. All right. So quick tangent. My advanced classes are different than my regular classes because you're a different type of person than my regular classes. I treat you different than I treat my regular classes. And I've discovered over the years that my advanced kids oftentimes use my class differently than my regular kids do. Because for a lot of times, junior high is about exploring your personality and figuring out who you are. And it took me way too long as a teacher to figure out how critical that is to you guys figuring out who you are. And a lot of kids in my class realize that you can explore who you are as a person without having negative ramifications. You can be the kid that talks out loud without worrying about getting a detention. You can be the kid that doesn't turn in homework and you're not going to get an immediate detention. You can figure out and play around different parts of your personality and you can feel safe. Because as a teacher, you realize I'm not going to yell at you. I'm not going to judge you. And I have a lot of kids who, in my advanced classes, act out in ways they would never act out in other classes. And I'm fine with that. Because it's helping you figure out who you are. And it's something that took me a long time to figure out sometimes, is that I had kids who behaved differently from me than other classes. I couldn't figure out why until I had a kid come back to me afterwards 
and explain the fact it was they felt comfortable in my class and they felt safe in my class, um, which, once again, ironic about attacking kids all the time. Uh, but that's what I try to do. I try to create a space where kids feel safe and where you get a chance to explore your personality and you don't have to worry about being judged by others so much. You don't have to worry about being judged by an adult. And I think that's a good thing. It's a critical part of who you are. Now back to lying to you. Ironically, that part is not a lie. I want to talk about lying, so follow with me. Um, <laughs> the lying to you. Um, I used to lie for different reasons. Uh, one of the whole trying to make you guys believe it in my class. The other part is, one, I never lie to get out of trouble. In my life, I don't lie to get out of trouble. It's not who I am as a person. Like Mrs. Thorpe or Mr. Butts came in and they're like, have you been beating kids? I'm not going to lie. I'm like, yeah, it's on video. Uh, like, it's a thing that I do. I would not lie to get out of trouble, but I will lie to you to make you a better person. One, when you're lazy and you ask me, do we have homework? I lie to you. And I'll tell you, we do have homework because you're being lazy. I want you to not be lazy. And so I'm going to lie to you to make you a better person. And the other thing that I touched on when we got to the end of Princess Bride is adults lie. People lie. People in authority lie. And recently, lies have been turned into facts. And it's scary in the real world that people can't figure out the difference between lies and truth. And the idea that we're raising a generation of people who can't tell the difference between lies and truth is scary. I could tell you as a teacher that you need to not believe everything everybody tells you. And you need to double check everything everybody tells you, even adults. But I understand that you guys are going to shrug that off and just be like, adult talking, blah, 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 blah. So instead, I help you learn that. And you discover that there are big chunks of what you believed were true in my class were lies. Because I took a rug and I yanked it out from underneath of you. And you went, blah! onto the ground. That pain of you emotionally hitting the ground, that's learning. That has an impact. As students, as humans, you need to challenge authority. Challenging authority is good. It's what changes the world. The last thing I want to do is create groups of kids who are scared to think for themselves and scared to challenge authority. I want you to stop challenging me right now. I want you to challenge authority. I'm just kidding. Wait till I get done. Um, I want you to challenge authority and to step up and realize that sometimes adults lie to you and it's your job to call them out and not just blindly accept what they tell you. Because if you don't, <laughs> we're headed for a bad place. Not just us, but our country. And our world is headed to a bad place. So we have to learn how to challenge those things. I lie to you with love in my heart because I want to make you a better person. There are going to be adults who lie to you who don't have love in their hearts, who have manipulation and evil in their hearts. And I want you to learn before they get to have control over you. I want you to learn before something awful happens. So that's why I run my room the way I do. Sandy. So um, how come when we challenge our teachers we get in trouble? You missed the part where I said not every teacher teaches the way I do. And so other teachers don't have the same beliefs I do. And so they're scared when you challenge them because they believe that there is an hierarchy between where teachers are and where students are. And I don't fully believe the same way. Just because I teach it to you doesn't mean it's going to make your life easier. Challenging adults and challenging authority figures is not an easy thing to do. It's a scary thing to do. You're going to get in trouble for it. But that doesn't make it wrong. There's a lot of things in our history that people challenged that were wrong. And just because you challenge it and people yell at you for it, that doesn't mean you shouldn't be doing it. It just means you have to be stronger when you face it. 
Now, at the same time, it doesn't mean challenge every adult you see. It means put some thought into it. Gesundheit. All right. Now, changing direction. Um, and I apologize if I um, repeat some things, because I've done this a number of times today. And in all honesty, my brain is starting to turn to mush. Uh, because uh, having emotions and caring about people and trying to connect with them is exhausting. Uh, and there's parts of my brain that are starting to melt, and I'm losing track when I've said certain things. And so I'm trying not to, but we'll see. I try to judge it off watching your reactions to see if I'm repeating things or not. So, fingers crossed. Oh, see, I forgot to even take it off that screen. See, I have my screens of inspirational things that are going to help me out. Uh, so we're going to jump to that one. We're just now getting into my first actual talk. Uh, that was just sort of like my advanced class talk. Uh, because part of the issue is, um, and as Warmus has seen, I have different talks with you guys than I do some of my other classes. Uh, and even between you guys and my second period, there's a talk I need to have with you that didn't apply to them as much. And I'm hoping I get to it um, and don't get distracted into many other things. But we'll see what happens. All right. Let's go with... I've spent the year earning your trust because not every human you meet should earn your trust. There are adults who should not have your trust. There are teachers who should not have your trust and respect because they've not earned your trust and respect. Respect is a thing that is earned by others. Respect is not a thing that is given. And that is a thing that other teachers don't believe the same way I do. Other teachers believe that you give respect to them because they are a teacher. And you give respect to them because they are an adult. The problem is, life doesn't work that way. You respect people who earn it from you. So I've spent this year trying to earn your respect with how I run my class because of today. Because of the lessons I want to pass along today. I've spent this last week showing you my past mistakes for today because I want you to understand where I come from and who I am as a person and know the fact that I don't see myself as perfect, that I know I come from a place of hardship and pain and that hardship and pain made me a stronger person. And I've learned a lot in my years of teaching. And some of it took way too long for me to learn. Uh, one of them is that quote that's up there by Irma Bombeck, um, which does not just apply to teaching, but applies to life in general. And it's something I don't think enough people take to heart. It's the idea that the people who deserve our love and forgiveness the least deserve it the most. When you're in junior high, when you're at this age, it's really easy to imagine every kid has the same life you do, just with different parents. That if you come from a happy home, every home is a happy home. If you come from a broken home, every home is a broken home. You only know what you've seen so far up to this point. The problem is, not every kid lives that kind of life. And I have realized that I have students in my classes who don't come from easy lives and don't come from happy homes. Some of you go home and you have two parents who tell you they love you and cook dinner for you and make you do your homework when you're supposed to and they punish you when you make poor choices and they do all the things a parent is supposed to do. That's how being a kid is supposed to work. The problem is, I have a lot of students who don't come from that kind of home. I have a lot of students in this class who don't come from that kind of home. I have kids who go home to divorced parents. Parents that yell at each other. Parents that fight each other. Or they only have one parent who's home or that one parent who is home is never around because they're always working. 
or the parents they have at home are alcoholics, or the parents they have at home are abusive, or any number of reasons that cause their home life to not be a happy place. I have a lot of kids whose homes are not where happiness is. Homes are an unhappy place. And they come to school to be happy. School should not be a happy place for anybody. <laughs> because if you come here and this has to be your happy place, that says something about home. So here's what I ask of you to realize. There are kids who are around you who are unhappy, who deal in misery on a daily basis, who in their home, their home is awful. You see the fact that there are junior high kids who are bad kids, who make bad choices, who do bad things. Those kids grow up to be adults. Those adults have children. Those children live in unhappy homes. Backing up, when you see those unhappy kids, they're in unhappy places. That's more than a 13-year-old should have to deal with. When you're 13, you should only have to deal with your parents and the easy things in life, rainbows, butterflies, getting grounded when you download Snapchat when you're not supposed to, and stuff like that. You shouldn't have to have the weight of all these other awful things on you. But we have kids who do. That's too much for kids to handle. That pain that they carry gets unleashed on people around them. You're not strong enough to carry that kind of pain and not have it lash out at others. You want to know why kids bully other people? Why they're mean to other people? Why you hear other kids who drink? Why they smoke? Why they do drugs? Why they do any number of poor choices they shouldn't? Because they're unhappy. Because of that weight on them. When you live in an unhappy home, you unleash that unhappiness on others. This impacts you in two ways. If you come from a place like that, where you have that unhappiness in your home, you can rise above it. It's not easy. There's no simple cure. There's no one thing I can tell you. You just have to realize you can be strong enough to rise above it. I know that because I've had students do it. My kids, who have those horrible home lives in seventh grade, rise above it and become amazing kids in high school. Not every single one of them. Some of them falter, some of them fall, and some of them lose track of their lives, and some of them turn to the dark path. But you can do it. Those of you who don't have that dark place in your life, your job is even tougher. Because here's what I ask of you. You need to be nice to them when they don't deserve it. Those kids who bully you, those kids who make fun of you, those kids who are mean to you, those kids who you see doing those awful things, they need love more than anybody else. It's easy to be nice to good kids. It's the bad kids who need you to be nice to them. So what I ask of you, is to be a strong enough person to be nice to those kids, to forgive them when they don't deserve it. And it's not going to be easy because I can't tell you that as soon as you're nice to them, they're going to turn around and be nice to you because they won't. They're going to keep being mean to you because that's all they know. It'd be real easy for you to lash back at them and be just as mean. You need to be strong. You need to learn to forgive and rise above as the only way you make the world a better place. You don't feed hatred with hatred. You feed hatred with love, and you make it small. You show them it's okay to be that good person. That's one of the things I ask of you to be able to do. Here's why I have to use my notes for a second to redirect myself. Um. Here's where I don't make eye contact with you for a moment. Um, I know more than I should about a lot of you uh, because I pay attention. 
and I listen to kids talk, and I listen to 8th graders talk, and I listen to 7th graders talk, and I've lived a long enough life that I'm aware when I see things going on. And part of the issue is, um, I know kids in my classes are in pain. And I know I have kids in my classes who are suffering. Um, and I can't always help every kid. But I try. Because I realize um, not every kid needs the same thing from me. Some kids in my class just need me to be the happy, friendly teacher where you have a place to come learn and smile. Um, and you have a teacher that... Um, makes you enjoy things for a moment. And I have some kids that need discipline and they need someone to yell at them because you need adults to yell at you. That's an adult's job is to yell at you because your job is <laughs> to rebel. That's what teenagers do. You're supposed to push limits. You're supposed to make mistakes. If you're a teenager and you don't make mistakes, you're doing something because you're supposed to screw up. That's how you figure out how the world works. It's a parent's job, it's an adult's job to let you know when you screw up and put you back on the right path. Some of you don't have adults who do that for you. And you don't have an adult who is putting you back on the right path. And you don't need a room where you just get to come and smile and have a good time. You enjoy it, but you need more. And for those kids, I try to do more. And for some of you, I try to be disciplined. I try to let you know that I have high expectations for you and that I'm not going to let you fall between the cracks. I'm not going to let you make those poor choices without repercussions. Others of you don't need discipline. You need someone to be nice to you. Um, because I have kids who go through the day... Uh, who never have an adult be nice to them because their parents are awful people and teachers treat them like they're trash and every human that they interact with treats them like they're a horrible person and when they come into my room they need to be here and have someone not do that to them and so for those kids that's my job is to be nice to that kid and I realize that's my job sometimes and I do that for them and then sometimes I have kids who I have to go a step further. Um, and they need someone to listen to them, which happens on occasion. Um, and for those kids, I tell you, because I don't know which kids they are, that I will always be willing to listen. Uh, whether it's in person or via email or letter or whatever it is, I'm always willing to listen and not judge with whatever's going on in your life. I'm more than happy to be the person that won't judge you for whatever is going on and to listen and help guide you. And I never know which kid it is. I used to give completely different speeches to my advanced classes than I did my regular classes because I thought advanced kids didn't really have issues. Uh, that advanced kids' lives were not ones of pain and sorrow, and that there weren't problems. <laughs> it turned out I was an idiot. Uh, not the first time in my life. Um, and that kids in my advanced classes have pain and sorrow and issues in their life, too. And I never know which kids it is that are suffering. There's some I know. There's a few of you who I know stuff about your home life. And I know the suffering that you're doing. But I don't know every kid. Um, and some of you are really good at hiding what's going on in your life. And if what I say today has no impact on you whatsoever, and you finish today and just think that it was a good speech and you enjoyed it, I'm fine with that. If you go through the next several years of your life and my speech today had no impact on you, I'm fine with that. That's wonderful, because that means things are going the way they should for you. For others of you, my speech is going to have an impact later. It won't be until this summer. It won't be until next year. It won't be until you're in high school. But at some point, 
you're going to have a time where the words I say come back to you, and they're going to have meaning to you then. And for others of you, my words have meaning right now, because you understand what I'm talking about. And if it's only one of you that my words have impact for, I'm fine with that. Uh, it was worth it for me to take a day to give strength to that one person. I just don't always know who that one person is. Um, and if it's you, realize from now until you forget about me, you do have someone who cares about you and someone who will listen to you. Because that's one of the drawbacks to me teaching. <laughs> I care about you. Uh, try not to. Try to hide it. Uh, sometimes I fail at it. Um, but <laughs> I really enjoy what I do. And I really enjoy teaching. And I would not enjoy teaching if it wasn't for you guys and your many personalities and watching you guys become who you are. Even those of you who think you might annoy me or annoy teachers, you don't. Um, because I'm a forgiving person and I'm not one to hold grudges and it's not who I am. I've seen too many of my kids go from 7th graders who made poor choices into high school kids who are amazing counselors to judge you. At the same time, I've seen too many of my kids who are amazing 7th graders throw their lives away uh, and become high schoolers. I've had advanced kids drop out of high school uh, and fail out. I've had advanced kids get pregnant their freshman year and come back to talk to me. I've had advanced kids who get arrested for drugs and alcohol um, because you're never too smart to avoid poor choices. Um, and if that's the path in front of you, then I'm always here and I'm happy to listen regardless of what might happen from here on out. All right, give me one moment. I think I have five minutes left with you guys so we get out at 1.50. Right? We made it through. We're almost there. It's all good. Um, let's go. See, here's the part where my brain melts down. I'm trying to figure out my last four minutes was I want to try and leave you guys with. All right. We'll try to end on a happy note. <laughs> I wore today's shirt on purpose because I had a number of ones to choose from. And it's a shirt that says, I am happy uh, because I am. But what you have to realize is the person you see in front of you is by choice. I wasn't born happy. I've not had a perfect life. I have heartache and pain. Um, I still have heartache and pain because I still love my family. And my family still continues to make poor choices. But I choose to be happy. Happiness is a choice you get to make. So what I ask of you is realize these are choices that you get to do. You get to choose to be happy in your life or you can choose to be miserable in your life. There's always going to be pain and heartache and misery and evil. It is always going to exist. It is always going to be around you. We can't get rid of it, but you can choose how you react to it. Do you want to choose to react to it with a smile and let it make you stronger? Or do you choose to let these things in your life break you down? I hope I've shown you this year that you can live a happy life. That you can choose happiness. Even with bad things that happen to you, you can choose that path. That's what I want you to do. And it's not easy. Because um, along the same lines, um, fear is going to hold you back. The fear of other people's opinions. The fear of what other people say. The fear of failure. Fear is powerful. And fear is going to prevent you from being the best person you should be. You're going to have to overcome that fear. 
and realize in life only one person is preventing you from being the person that you want to be. Whoever that person is. There's only one person stopping you. And that's you. And the fear you're letting that person keep on top of you. Why do you let your fear of people you don't respect, your fear of those words from people that you give no value to, control your opinion of yourself? Don't do it. Release that fear. Embrace who you are and take control of your life. You can do it. And along those same lines, let's finish with this. As you move forward, smile because it happened. Don't cry because it's over. Ooh, perfect timing. Hashtag professional. Okay.